Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to talk to you guys a little bit about grip strength and the deadlift, um, how to build it up correctly, and maybe things that are going on with your grip uh, that are signs you're doing other things wrong in your training besides your actual uh, deadlift or grip work. So let me put on my plus five out of weaponsmithing, work on skilling up my crafting a little bit, and uh, let's talk about this. All right, up front, uh, one of the things, the biggest things, and people know my stance on this already, I think most of you do, straps are probably the worst thing ever invented as far as grip strength goes. Now, I'm not saying there aren't some championship winning power lifters who don't use straps during certain parts of their training, uh, but there are also some who never use straps. The problem is that though, you're talking about sometimes people who have already developed such an enormous grip strength that they can pull 700 pounds uh, without straps already. All right, so you're, you're talking about a different animal there, though, when, when you're talking about the average person. The average person needs to completely avoid straps for at least the first few years of training. And when I say avoid straps, I mean avoid straps on every exercise. Uh, the reason I say that is because um, your forearms, think about your forearms, and think about the people who have the strongest forearms and strongest grip that you ever meet. Uh, oftentimes, are they generally people who lift weights, people who go to the gym? Usually not, usually manual laborers, all right? People who are manual laborers who use their grip for hours every single day. Guys who build fence all day, mechanics who turn wrenches all day, carpenters who are swinging hammers all day, bricklayers. A lot of those guys, when you meet them, they might not be that big, but they'll have thick, corded forearms. And when they gr grab you or arm wrestle you or squeeze your hand, when they shake your hand, you notice. Yet they oftentimes have grips on par with very serious, even top level weightlifters and power lifters, right? But they're not really always doing anything heavy. It's volume, volume, volume. The reason for that is that the forearms are very much an endurance oriented uh, set of muscles. And that also includes your grip. Your grip strength develops very effectively with high volumes of training. So you can see the problem here. A lot of people will, will say things like, well, I'm gonna just wear straps uh, on my heaviest lifts or whatever, on my deadlift or on some of my rows or whatever because it's tired, it's fatigued, it's not strong enough, right? And then I'm gonna do extra grip work. Well, that's the last thing you should be doing because again, what does uh, those muscles respond best to? Volume, high volume, endurance, grip endurance using them repeatedly over and over, sometimes for hours. So do you really think cutting some of the work out and just adding extra work to replace it is going to fix the problem uh, that effectively? Think on that one for a minute. You cut the volume. Just because you added some other in doesn't replace the fact that you cut the main volume you needed. In fact, you cut the sport specific one that you needed. If you need to be able to grip a bar tighter on the deadlift, that's actually your best grip builder is to be holding onto a bar the diameter of a deadlift bar. You've cut that out to replace it with something close to maybe replicate the volume. And then you wonder why your grip never catches up. If anything, you would add more grip volume without using the straps. That's actually what you would do best. That would be a much better choice if that was the case, right? Doesn't that make more sense? When you think about it from the volume end, that makes a lot more sense. Makes a hell of a lot more sense. Uh, but you know a lot of times guys will do that and then they'll go ahead that maybe they'll do their deadlifts And then their grip is giving out on their deadlifts. It's fatigued. It's tired when that but then when they'll do chin-ups or barbell rows or lat pull downs or something they'll strap up They're losing volume on their grip training and again, they wonder why their grip gives out I mean seriously guys think on that for a minute You don't row or lat pull down anywhere near as much weight as you do on the deadlift why would you be struggling to hold on to it? That should be easy gripping, easy gripping that just adds extra volume. But if you're struggling with that, what does that tell you? That tells you something else. What is another problem with grip strength? What is your body telling you when you're struggling with grip and your grip is, grip is giving out on a, on a weight that's too light? Meaning that you shouldn't be giving out on. You're like, what? what's going on here? Like, let's say normally you've pulled um, 400 pounds for five reps on the deadlift before with no problems. And then another time your grip is giving out on the third rep on a different day. Or you go to row 
uh, 250 pounds and it's slipping out of your, your grip by the sixth or seventh rep. But you've gripped 405 before. Uh, something's wrong. It's not your grip endurance giving out because grip responds best to endurance. It's endurance oriented muscles. It's endurance oriented performance. When your grip starts giving out prematurely at times that it shouldn't, that is a sign of peripheral nervous system fatigue. That means your peripheral nervous system has been overtaxed and it's giving up. And what it does is a sign to that you can't grip things as hard as you used to. You're losing grip strength as a result of your nervous system being over fatigued. The problem isn't your grip itself. It's not the muscles in your hands and your forearms that are the problem at that point. It's your peripheral nervous system. The part of your nervous system that controls all your limbs is fatigued. Why? Probably because you've been doing grinders on the deadlift or grinders on heavy barbell rows or hitting muscle failure on them and then not giving it adequate time to recover. You're hitting too many reps to failure, too many reps that are grinding and that you're having to use bad technique and your nervous system is fatigued. The reason your grip starts giving out due to peripheral nervous system fatigue is that's a mechanism in your body to keep you from hurting yourself. That's because your body knows, your nervous system knows that you have been over pushing the nervous system beyond what it can recover from. When you start doing that, technique starts breaking down on big heavy exercises. When you go to pull a weight that you're, uh, you can't use good technique on because your nervous system is overtaxed, uh, you're more prone to injury. Also, if you're pushing things so hard that your nervous system is taxed, usually your connective tissue is fatigued as well somewhere. Uh, that sloppy technique combined with that uh, overuse of connective tissue causes tears and rips. Your body makes your grip give out to keep you from getting hurt. So then, guys, grip gives out because they've overpushed their nervous system because they're doing things they shouldn't be doing in training. Like I've said before, training to failure on the deadlift is a bad thing. It's not something you should be doing. Uh, I've covered that in extensive detail in the past. So something is going on to where you're at a chance, higher chance of injury and your, your peripheral nervous system is fatigued and it's giving out and making your grip give up to reduce your chances of hurting yourself. So if you start strapping up at that point, you're now at a higher chance of injury because you're performing exercises in a way uh, that your body is saying, no, there's something wrong. Uh, you need to back down a notch and you're bypassing it with the straps. It's like having a... <laughs> people who are familiar at all with electrical devices, you know, you have circuit breakers and things that when there's a surge or something going on or in there, so they'll give out uh, and the circuit breaker will, will blow or pop. This is a really cheap, inexpensive piece to replace. And uh, some people will shade tree mechanic this, and that's not the term, I guess uh, jerry rigging is the term. And they'll just bypass it with a piece of metal, that circuit breaker. So then when the next surge comes through, something expensive or the whole device gets fried. Uh, same sort of thing here. You're just going to bypass your fail-safe system so that when something gets a little worse that you end up hurting yourself. Something actually gives out and you're at a higher chance of injury by doing that. You shouldn't be doing that. You, If your grip is giving out prematurely on other exercises, it's usually your peripheral nervous system is an issue. And that's a sign that it's time to step back and reassess your training. It's time to deload. Uh, it's time to take a rest. It's time to do something to let your nervous system and your body recover. You shouldn't need to strap up. You shouldn't need to strap up at all. Uh, that's problematic. That's risky. You're, you're at a higher chance of injury from that. And what I would say, again, stop taking your deadlifts to failure all the time. Stop taking your deadlifts to failure all the time. And start doing all of your pulling exercises without straps. If you do that from day one, from the day you come in, if you start training from day one using nothing but chalk, using nothing but chalk to lift, maybe even some days deadlifting with bars that are the larger diameter bars. Those are harder to pull, it's harder to grip. Maybe work with some of those sometimes. In fact, sometimes I've had uh, people who are starting out start with the thicker bars. It will build their grip strength up faster so that when they go to a deadlift bar, the grip is gonna feel so easy that, they're, that it's, it's laughable. Um, do some of that. Start doing all of your rowing, all of your pull-ups, all of your chin-ups, all of your lat pull-downs. Do everything without straps so that you get high volumes of pulling work into where you're gripping. 
a lot of your other athletic exercises will build those muscles up too. How about power cleans? How about front squats? How about your overhead press? Even that will help over time because that actually puts some extra work on the forearms. It might not do as much as the others, but it will add overall fatigue uh, that will help build those things up. Doing a wider variety of big barbell exercises, a wider variety of those will add more training volume to your grip. And you know what? If your grip is giving out a little bit, if your grip is giving out a little bit, then fine, it's the weak link in your deadlift for now. Back your deadlift down, down a notch, do all these other exercises without straps, and that will add, again, more training volume to it. And particularly your accessory work, your accessory work, all your stuff without straps, all your rowing, pulling, things like that, that will strengthen your grip through the volume of training. You know, your grip responds well to higher volume training. It recovers well to high volume training also. So you're eventually gonna find recovery will eventually turn into a non-issue there once your grip strength goes up then you're going to find that your deadlifting will be easy again. Now, as far as other things people do, people are always like, well, you know, when should people go to an under over grip? Should they use hook grip? Things like that. Um, I'm a fan of mixed grip. I am. I don't like the hook grip. And the argument is it's like whatever injury risks are there with mixed grip are usually there because people have bad technique on the deadlifts or because they do partial reps on curls. If you do more stretching type things on your curls, let's say you do more of your pull-ups, your chin-ups from a dead hang at the bottom or you do incline curls and go all the way down, uh, your bicep tendons are gonna tend to hold up better because you're training all of that through a fuller range of motion. That's gonna reduce your risk of tearing a bicep on the deadlift. Do more of that. Learn to lock your arms better on your deadlift. Learn to pay attention to your body. It kind of goes back to the other thing. If people are fatiguing their peripheral nervous system, um, and just trying to bypass it with straps, they're not paying attention to their body. Well, the same thing goes with connective tissues. Bicep tears are rarely sudden. They're rarely something that just happens out of nowhere. It's people usually ignoring nagging aches and pains and not deloading when they need to. That's how bicep tears happen nine out of 10 times. It's, it is oftentimes a connective tissue overworking issue without giving it sufficient recovery time. Well, if you do that all the time, wouldn't you expect to eventually tear something. So that's where the mixed grip gets dangerous is those sort of situations, not paying attention to your body, not paying attention to connective tissue inflammation, maybe doing half reps or partial reps on curls instead of full range of motion. You know, this is the sort of stuff that, that causes this. Uh, it's not the mixed grip by itself. Whereas in the hook grip will always cause nerve damage in your thumbs over time. So I generally recommend doing mixed grip. Now, when should you go to the mixed grip? When you have to. If you have a starting lifter, do double overhand grip. Occasionally do double overhand with thicker bars. Uh, do all their accessory work without straps, at least one or two accessories out there that they do, their rows, their lat pull downs, whatever they're doing. Do all their accessory work without straps. Their grip will generally build up pretty strong. And for long periods of time, they may not even need to go to the mixed grip. Uh, like you guys have seen me train Brittany, you, if anyone has noticed, Brittany still double overhands uh, 185 for five reps. She's done that on camera. That's still double overhand. For a female, that's not a bad deadlift. She's not super strong yet. She's never used a mixed grip. We haven't had to take her to the mixed grip because her grip has never given out on a lift yet. But she does rows and everything else without straps. She's built up her deadlift from day one without straps. Jeevan was doing Romanian deadlifts for a while without straps while we got her mobile enough to do regular deadlifts. There's no straps involved, so her grip has never become a weak link for her. So for now, she's double overhand, and when she needs to use a mixed grip, well, I'll switch her over to a mixed grip, and it's the same for most of the guys out there. Uh, switch to the mixed grip when you need to, and it can actually be quite a long time. You'd be surprised sometimes how long you can train and how strong you can get before you need to go over to that. Uh, but I usually recommend doing it that way, double overhand with chalk until you have to go to the mixed grip. And then when you have to go to the mixed grip, you switch over to it and just be careful with it. Pay attention to your body and uh, your risk of injury is pretty low. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.